It's the first of the month, and you guys know what that means. Time for another episode of Crime After Crime with the lovely and talented... Danielle Hallam that is still creating little jingle intros in her head. Are you? If, if you're watching on the video version, you'd see me dance into every intro of this podcast. I don't know what it is. Something about your voice, John. I just like get this like game showy jingle thing going on. I really wish you guys could hear it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Don't miss out on the YouTube video so you can see her move into the groove. Uh, and I am John Lorden. I was actually going to say the lovely and talented John Lorden, but Danielle jumped in there. Um, so <laughs> had t- <laughs> I mean, if the shoe fits, you gotta just take it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, Danielle, it's November 1st and you still have Halloween decorations up. I knew you were going to burn me on this, but what's <laughs> even funnier about this is that I'm also using a Christmas mug right now. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so I just like to celebrate all the, ho- all, all of the holidays at once. Yeah. You're full on all nightmare before Christmas right now. Yep, all the way. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I had to take a, a day off of my YouTube job just because I couldn't get my decorations up in time. So, uh, and I don't like putting up Halloween decorations and then leaving them for a long period of time. I like it to be yeah. special. So I actually put them up the same day, like earlier that day, and they just run them for that one night and then they literally come down the next day. Um, so yeah, I had to take a day off of my YouTube work so I could hit that time frame right. But uh, I know. And I was sitting here talking up my Halloween decorations, I believe in the last episode, mm-hmm. they're pathetic this year. Oh, so, oh. so there's that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you had your busy <laughs> Halloween stuff going on on your channel. So I yeah. know I know how crazy that makes you. It's been a crazy month. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. We hope all of you <laughs> had a great time for Halloween and stayed safe and had a lot of fun and hopefully got a lot of candy. Ooh. Yeah. My favorite part. Yeah. Taking and my kids candy. Maybe they don't saw like a ghost some of it. somewhere. Was that was, was that a ghost singing in the background I just heard? <laughs> it was. Okay. It was. Good, good. I'm here for all the sound effects of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we still haven't figured out a way to uh, pay for an engineer to add sound effects under us. But we have Danielle. We don't need it. Um, Awesome. Well, just to remind everyone, uh, you can vote on Crime After Crime at the Twitter account, which is at Crime After Pod. And you can vote for up to seven days after the episode releases or... You guys can also vote on YouTube. Just hover your mouse over the screen or just tap your screen and a little eye will appear in the corner. You tap that thing and you vote for who you thought brought the best story. Absolutely. And we have voting results (laughs) with Danielle from our last episode, which was Haunted Houses. What happened, Mm -hmm. Danielle? So Twitter poll. I received 67% of the votes. And John received 33%. Wow. Y'all. Wow. That is crazy. They love you. I actually remember someone, I had said something about it and someone was like, Danielle, don't talk too quick because I just voted on the poll and I don't know if you're seeing it, but you are doing pretty good. Yeah. I have no idea. (laughs) I can't trust you. Whenever you say you're not sure if you're going to win or you think that I've taken it. I yeah. think it swings the other way. It's almost like that's a code word. Are you going <laughs> Maybe on... everyone feels sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not exactly where I was going to take it, but however it works, it seems to work. Um, oh, my goodness. Wow. 67% yep. to 33. Very, very good work, uh-huh. Danielle. How about and YouTube? YouTube poll, 70% for me and 29% for John. Wow. Amazing. Oh, my goodness. So that means... Hand that mug on over, John. Okay, if I'm I have taking it to. Back. Here you go. Take it. Take it. Perfect. Oh, oh, it feels so nice to have this back. I lost it well, after my big old season. And now I'm here. You I'm clearly earned it. it. You clearly <laughs> earned it. And and by the way, we're, we're at one for one now. So mm-hmm. quite honestly, um, season two is starting to remind me a lot of season one. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Things are just, they're going. Yeah. But I do want to quickly thank everyone again for voting for me. I was so into that story. It's not even funny. I continued my research into it afterwards. I was really proud of it. So I just want to give you guys a huge thank you for getting me my mug back. <laughs> yeah. And I want to give a huge thank you to the 29% and the 33% that voted for me because you guys are awesome too. Keep it up. Let's see what's going to happen this episode. Maybe I can continue the season of revenge. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's going to flitter out and <laughs> wind up with me crying in a corner in my studio. Let's see. 
Um, <laughs> all right. So for this topic, you might have noticed in the title that we've tweaked it just a little bit. So we've made it crazy Craigslist crimes. Um, Danielle and I, we'll frequently talk uh, while we're getting ready for episodes. And we talk to each other and we're like, you know what? A lot of these Craigslist crimes, they're kind of grisly. Yeah. They're, they're kind of dark. Uh, so we wanted to throw it in a little bit of a different direction, kind of lighten it a little bit. So crazy Craigslist crimes is where the topic is now. And we want to, before we get to our stories, share a little backstory about Craigslist with you guys and maybe some tips on how to stay safe there. Uh, Craigslist can be a great resource for people looking for deals, jobs, roommates, and a lot more. But as you'll see with our stories today, some Craigslist transactions can go very wrong. Craigslist was originally started in the San Francisco Bay Area back in 1995. It was named after its creator, Craig Newmark, and over the years, they expanded Craigslist to serve other cities. And by 2007, Craigslist had a staff of 24 employees and was being used in 50 countries. Craigslist adds millions of classified ads every single month, and those ads lead to billions of views every month. But of course, with any new marketplace comes the opportunity for criminals to get to work. Many different crimes have occurred to Craigslist users, from simple robberies all the way to murders. According to the Washington Post, in late 2015, Craigslist passed the 100 murders mark. And you guys know, even our friend, Anthony Curcio, <laughs> DBTuber, otherwise known as, I know that's probably how all of you remember him, mm -hmm. he used Craigslist in his robbery plot when he asked multiple people to come to his getaway scene all wearing the same clothes. But things may not be as bad as they initially sound. Matthew McKenzie at allbusiness.com was responding to a study released that said Craigslist was linked to 330 U.S. crimes over a 12-month period. What does that exactly translate to? Well, the number of Craigslist postings that year in North America was 573 million Wow. That, that means the percentage of those posts associated with serious crimes was 0.00005%. Your odds of picking a random Craigslist post associated with one of those crimes would be one in two million. Your mm -hmm. odds of being killed in an airplane, about one in 844,000. Your odds of being struck by lightning are about one in 14,600. And everyone makes fun of me because I refuse to go outside if it's lightning. I still won't even take a shower if it's lightning because I believe that whether that's a myth proven or not, I refuse. I, I, <laughs> Chances seriously, are too high. <laughs> I didn't realize that it was so low for being struck by lightning. Um, I know. And the yes. shark attack, there's like a huge gap there. But the Craigslist crime is an even farther gap. Yep. And Monica Bennett at Vocal Media has some tips to stay safe while using Craigslist. Never wire money through Western Union or any other wire service yeah. at all. Scammers prefer this method. Also, if you're a seller, cashier's checks and money orders are easily faked. Demand cash. But that can also be risky. Counterfeiters love big cash transactions. Trust your instincts. If, feel, if things feel strange, get out immediately. Mm -hmm. Also, if a deal is too good to pass up, it's probably a scam. Let people at home or friends know where you are going and never go alone. Males are at risk too. Do not allow buyers or sellers into your home. Deal with local people you can meet in person, preferably at a safe trade spot. If there's not a safe trade spot near you, meet in a very public place in daylight only. Not sure what a safe trade spot is? That's where you agree to meet the buyer or seller only at a police station, sheriff's office, or similar law enforcement facility. Many police departments are offering safe trade facilities. Some require an appointment. Others make their lobby or similar open to the public area available. If you cannot meet inside the lobby, meet in the parking lot. Typically, they have cameras and a lot of police officers are coming and going. Please learn more at safetradestations.com because we don't want you to become the victim of a crazy Craigslist crime. And with that, we get to our first story of the day. Danielle, are you ready? I am so ready. This topic is definitely one that hits home for me because if any of you, I don't know if you're aware, one of my all time favorite things to do ever is browse Craigslist. Wow. <laughs> I do it all the time. I don't know what it is, but every night before I go to bed, I end up laughing hysterically at 
for at least 30 minutes probably, going through all of the interesting personal ads, the strange objects that I find that people have for sale. I once stumbled upon a broken bucket with rocks. <laughs> Not a joke. I mean, I- For sale? Laugh. Ex yes, exactly. Awesome. It was like, well, like the free section. But oh, I mean, okay. who, some of the things you even find in the free section, you're like, what? Like, why would you even take the time to post this? Like at this point, drop it off somewhere. Don't worry about it. You know, but even while doing that, and it's fun to browse, there's still this deep fear I have of the possible dangers that come with a site like Craigslist. I've personally never bought anything because of this fear. I never know who I might be meeting and what may happen. But it turns out that even then, there are many ways Craigslist can still affect you whether you want it to or not. Okay. Uh-huh. Craigslist is already a scary place since you never know who's posting the ads, responding to them, what intentions they have. And again, like we said before, while the chances you encounter a crime on Craigslist are apparently only one in two million, it still happens. And to me, I feel like it happens much more than that. Craigslist isn't known to do much when it comes to ensuring the authenticity of the posts, and they also don't appear to do much to encourage safe use. This makes a perfect breeding ground for criminals because of the anonymity. And that's exactly why this criminal used it. On December 26, 2013, a woman named Dawn called into the Racine County Sheriff's Office asking for help about a situation she was dealing with. She claimed that out of nowhere, starting roughly six months prior, strange men started to show up to her home in the middle of the night. She wasn't familiar with any of them, which was concerning, obviously, but even more so because each one of them would repeatedly knock on her door and ask for her by her full name. Uh oh. Most of them lingered around for a while and relentlessly attempted to get Dawn's attention. Dawn was a single mom. She was living home alone with her daughter, so she obviously refused to answer the door for these strange men. And then when she would yell at these men from inside, the safety of inside, to go away, they always mentioned something about a Craigslist personals ad and then eventually left. Hmm. She had no clue what any of these men could possibly want from her, and she had no clue what Craigslist ad they were even referring to. Then the night of the 26th was really the straw that broke the camel's back. It was 12.30 a.m. and Dawn was home alone with her daughter as usual when another man arrived at her front door. Without even looking, she knew exactly what was going on. Despite this happening multiple times prior, she remained horrified because she still couldn't figure out why this was happening. And so far, she hadn't done anything about it. The strange man was repeatedly ringing the doorbell, asking to be let in, and it appeared he was wearing a large raincoat and it definitely wasn't raining. So many red flags were going up, so this time she decided to call 911 for help. She explained to them what had been going on and that this man in particular looked up to no good. When they arrived, the man in the raincoat was still at the home and they were in for a bit of a surprise. He was wearing absolutely no clothing underneath his raincoat. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not a stitch of clothing. Oh, my God. <laughs> when they asked him why he was there and why on earth he was naked, he had a simple explanation. He said that he had seen an ad on Craigslist from a woman eliciting sexual activity. He said that he had some email correspondence with Dawn specifically, and she had given him her address and told him to come over late that night. This is not at all what authorities were expecting to hear, but it seemed to be a misunderstanding, so the man was just sent away from the home, and authorities tried to sort out what on earth was going on. Dawn claimed she had absolutely no knowledge of these ads on Craigslist and didn't know who would be putting them up. An investigator got in contact with Craigslist, who was very cooperative, which is good, mm -hmm. considering they don't, you know take a lot of other precautions. Yeah. And they found that there were six separate ads on Craigslist that were posted in Don's name, but the contact email was a fraudulent one. Mm. Now, this isn't two odds. They just double checked with her to make sure it really wasn't her. Cause some people will say it wasn't them, but they'll also have like a secret email that they're using, sure. but it was in fact not her. The ads themselves were sexual in nature and were basically soliciting mails to the home for this promised sexual encounter. Now, authorities ended up getting a subpoena to obtain the IP address for the computer where the posts were being made, and from there, they managed to get access to the emails that were sent. The emails back and forth confirmed the intentions of the ad and always gave Dawn's full name and home address with the instructions of how and when the men should show up. Does this trace back to a raincoat <clears throat> manufacturer? <laughs> surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly, no. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Through the IP address, they were also able to see exactly who was posting the ads themselves, and it led them straight to 31-year-old Jason Willis. Mm, okay. This was not an unfamiliar name at all. This man was Don's neighbor. Mm, wow. Authorities asked Dawn why Jason might have wanted to do this to her, and she did admit that she had a few run-ins with the Willis family. She specifically had poked fun at him one time, apparently, for previous time he had spent in jail. Mm. But she claimed that there hadn't been any recent issues or anything that she believed would have caused him to want to do this. When authorities confronted Willis, he was first of all very shocked <laughs> to see authorities about this. And he also claimed that he was simply playing a funny joke on his neighbor and meant her absolutely no harm. But what he didn't realize is how much danger he potentially put Dawn and her daughter in and that what he did was a crime and not just one, but many of them. Yeah, those guys and are in danger too. What, exactly. what if she was so scared to the point that she armed herself and you know mm -hmm. someone's at her front door and something really bad happens? I exactly. Mean, yeah, that's terrible. He committed felony fraud by impersonating someone online that he was not. Yeah. And he had also posted fraudulent ads, which is against the law, as well as solicited sexual activity, which is also against the law. And they're not even just minor crimes either. And he seemed no idea. Absolutely yeah. no idea he was actually doing something illegal. He was arrested and charged formally with felony identity theft, which had the potential to land him in prison for as long as six years. He managed to get out on bail and was allowed back to his home despite it being in close proximity to Dawn, but he was ordered to stay away from the victim entirely. They also demanded that all electronics be removed from the home by the time of his trial. In 2014, 31-year-old Jason Willis was sentenced to two years of probation. <laughs> which is nothing compared to what he could have received and was told that he may not in any way ever again use the internet. It became this whole thing like the man banned from the internet. Wow. Like this whole thing happened. The judge said that those that drink lose the privilege to drive and those that abuse the internet shouldn't be able to use the internet. It's, I think that's pretty good. It, yeah, it's kind of not a bad idea. <laughs> I just don't know how you effectively support that. Like, how do you make sure he's not using the internet anymore? Well, I know that they periodically checked his home. Any home that he lived in could have no internet service provider at all. If he violated his probation at all, he would spend 18 months in prison, followed by another 18 months of supervision. And yep. this entire time, he maintained that it was just a simple joke and that he wasn't purposely targeting his neighbor. But the judge told him that this took him months of work <laughs> and emails back and forth right. between people, multiple postings. There were some people that fell through and then he kept trying with another person. Dawn also said that at one point she saw Willis watching one of the men at her door. Like she was looking through the people, looking through her windows. She saw him watching this whole interaction going on. Right. And then she didn't really think much of it. But now looking back, she realizes he was probably enjoying watching all of this play out with absolutely zero regards for anyone's safety. He literally thought it was a joke. Yeah. To this day, she says that she is still nervous when anybody comes to her door and she will not use Craigslist. Ah, oh, terrible. Terrible. I can't believe he did that. He genuinely seemed to think it was like a like a joke. Like, like he a genuinely funny joke. thought it was yeah. funny. Yeah. But Craigslist can be so dangerous. Well, I understand the statistics aren't that bad, but it's just way too public. Way yeah. too yeah. public. Yeah. Yeah. And especially for people mm -hmm. using it in that manner. Uh like for oh, him boy. for yep. him to think that's a joke. Um, there are a couple of cases, uh, I didn't want to cover them on today's episode <laughs> because we're, we, we spun it to crazy, yeah. but, um, there is one case in particular where a man was, uh, impersonating his, either his ex-wife or his soon to be ex-wife kind of in the same way yeah. on Craigslist and asking for people to come over and be forceful with her. Oh uh, saying that that's that's the type of physical attention she was looking for. So essentially, he was telling people to go assault his wife as his wife, and that that was the the type of attention she was looking for. Uh, and there's, if I remember right, in that case, he's sitting in jail for six, 60 oh, yeah. years. Good. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, because that actually turns into a sexual assault at that point. It's um, absolutely insane, though. Who is just sitting in their house all day and is like, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I'm going to post this woman's full address online, 
tell these men to show up naked in raincoats like so weird yeah i mean if it's one thing if i mean order some pizzas to her door i know but i'm gonna have men show up and they're gonna be flashing her like how does that get her back i'd be curious to know what their original issue was i know me too like if he tried to come on to her at some point or if he asked her out and she kind of blew him off there seems to be some type of at least sexualized component to this story if not a romantic component maybe from his perspective yeah it's just it's weird that he would want or maybe maybe he wants to see guys uh showing off their stuff under the (laughs) raincoat you never know you really don't (laughs) yeah he might have been enjoying it if he was was watching yeah that's not a bad scam i I need to put up a craigslist ad about the uh my next door neighbors that are holding auditions for a new strip club (laughs) (laughs) everyone Come on out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just stand in line outside the house. We'll, we'll come out and get you uh, as soon as we're ready. <laughs> just don't knock. No knocking. No hitting the doorbell. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. That was a crazy one. It is crazy. Six it, posts. And this poor woman had no idea either. She's just wondering why all these men are showing up to her front door. Yeah. You said she was a mother too, right? <laughs> yeah. She had a daughter and yeah. it was just the two of them living in the house. That's not nice. I'm honestly surprised she didn't call earlier though. If mm. if I had someone come to my door and, pro- and I didn't know them and they directly asked for me by name and this happened more than one time, I'd yeah. probably call. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm also very paranoid. She might have just been like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> there's there's a good little lesson in that. I think that's that's <clears> worth <throat> sharing with everyone. You know, if, if you have weird things like that happen, yeah, just get it reported somewhere. Yeah. If Evidence nothing else. It, you never know what someone's put online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If Well, and you never know, like if you call police and you're like, hey, there's a guy that keeps showing up at my place. They might have a record of this guy. This yeah. might be an ongoing thing. And now you're adding to the case that they need. Mm-hmm. Um, but even outside of that, just noting that there's those kind of issues. I mean, what happens if there's a 911 call and all of a sudden, um, you know, they're looking at the home, they're like, hey, we've got all these flags because people have been around this house a lot lately. We don't know why. Get Um, out there. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Everything gets prioritized when it comes to their work. So uh, anything that you can do uh, to to help them get to the right place at the right time, you want to do that. So Mm -hmm. that's a good point. She probably should have called some help uh, a little before that. Not a nice neighbor. No. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And terrible. Craigslist affected her and she didn't even know what was happening. She was she might not have even been using it ever. Right. <laughs> That's right. what gets to be the most too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I've I'm trying to think. I think the only time I've really used I've used eBay a lot, like maybe about a decade ago or so. I even sold a car on eBay motors. Um, but for Craigslist I think the the biggest use I had for it was uh, I was doing a show for my YouTube channel mm-hmm. and I did all the casting pretty much through it. Um, and some of the crew, you know, got oh, hired a couple. Cool. Yeah, hired a couple camera guys and all that kind of stuff. It actually turned out to be a pretty good resource. I mean, it's just for making connections, right? And if you yeah. can make connections with people that have the right skill set or the right equipment that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I actually had a really good experience, but I don't, admittedly, I don't use it a whole lot. And I don't go reading it for my own entertainment at random <laughs> hours. <laughs> I do. Pal will be like, what are you doing? It's like midnight. And I'm like, I'm just looking at the free section on Craigslist. Just give me a break. You're not like, reading was- up on missed connections, are you? Oh, those do are they hilarious. still have that section? Yes. And it's hilarious. <laughs> I have found some of the craziest things Granted, most of them are just very creepy. I will say that. Yeah. But there are some that are absolutely hilarious. But my favorite is like the free section because people will gather like the most random things. You'll find a listing for like seven pencils, a handful of rubber bands, and like half a piece of paper. And they're like, come pick it up sitting outside in a box. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, on my way. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. (laughs) I'm telling you about the broken bucket. Oh, it wasn't filled with rocks. It was filled with horseshoes. That's what it was. Well, that's that. Now that might be more reasonable. Someone might need some horseshoes. A broken bucket filled with some horseshoes. <laughs> it's like, uh, dang, I, how did you know exactly what I was looking for? Am I right to assume that, like, now you've got me all curious, like, especially about because the misconnections <clears throat> thing just has this like one story that stuck in my mind where a guy goes on there and he's like, I saw you on the subway. 
I'm looking for this woman that was, you know, last Tuesday on this subway mm -hmm. going to the, is that what it's like still? Yeah, that's exactly what that's, it's like. That's still. all that it is. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> But like, they're so oh. funny too, though, because some of them like are so cryptic. There's no way even the person that saw them knows what they're talking about. Like, oh, it'll be sure. like you, me, we were there on the corner. Tell me what I was wearing. So I know it's you. And I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa. It was I don't a raincoat. Understand. You were wearing a raincoat and but nothing it's like, else. Where, where were you and on what corner? And what do you mean? It's me. I don't know you. This is a misconnection. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. I'm telling you, see, you're laughing. This is why I do this. It's so funny. There should I be a podcast. It. Missed Connections, the podcast. Look, you're giving me more podcast ideas here. <laughs> Coming soon. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last episode. Did I talk about that Craigslist Joe guy or something? There's like a YouTuber that uses Craigslist for everything. Like yeah, that's yeah, his yeah, thing. yeah, you told me that, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. A little, little call out for Craigslist, Joe, if you guys are looking for some <laughs> entertainment. All right, well, we will be back with my big story right after this short commercial break. With a family of four and a full-time career, I don't always have time to get to the grocery store. HelloFresh delivers a box right to your door with step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured ingredients, everything I need to pull together a delicious meal in about 30 minutes. I'm not a great cook, Danielle, but HelloFresh keeps it simple. I've made healthy farro bowls and even a tasty risotto. By far, these are the best dishes I've ever made. Just ask my wife. We had a delicious Gouda pork burger, and it was great knowing they kept my allergies in mind and out of my meals. Yeah, I'm also a vegetarian, and guess what? They've got us covered. They want to make your life easier so they keep it very flexible. Easily change your delivery days, food preferences, and even skip a week whenever you need. HelloFresh has an amazing offer for our listeners. For a limited time only, get nine free meals with HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash crime after crime nine and enter crime after crime nine and you'll get nine free meals. Hold on. So you're saying for a limited time only, our listeners can get nine free meals with HelloFresh by going to HelloFresh.com forward slash crime after crime nine and entering code crime after crime nine? That's right. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and eating out far too often. Try HelloFresh today. When it comes to beauty products, we have so many choices. So why not ask for more from your favorite brands? I'm motivated now more than ever to stick to high quality, amazing products that are both vegan and cruelty free. That's why I'm so glad I discovered Thrive Cosmetics. They use only clinically proven ingredients, meaning no parabens or sulfates. My wife absolutely loves Thrive Cosmetics. She tells me the makeup isn't too heavy, the mascara doesn't clump, and she loves that she can trust. It's all vegan. It's even certified by Leaping Bunny and PETA. I also need long lasting makeup for filming and this makeup has been put to the test. The brilliant eye brightener blends like a dream and makes my skin glow beautifully. I also love the convenience of their auto replenish so I never run out of my essentials, which is great since I'm a busy mom that forgets everything. For every product purchase, they also donate to women emerging from homelessness, survivors of domestic abuse and women that are battling cancer. Start thriving and help women in need today by going to thrivecosmetics.com slash crime after crime and enter code crime after crime for 15% off your first purchase. That's T-H-R-I-V-E-C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash crime after crime. And remember that code crime after crime for 15% off thrivecosmetics.com slash crime after crime. Welcome back and please support these amazing companies that believe in crime after crime. But yeah. most importantly, John's story's coming. Oh, wow. Thank you for the intro. That was awesome. I'm ready. I am surprised I didn't do a jingle with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a story that I like to call casual encounters with an intruder. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, October 26th, 2011, Colorado Springs, Colorado. At 3.13 in the morning, a 24-year-old man named Kevin Gaylor calls 911. He tells the dispatcher, someone is over here. They just parked here and they come up on my door and I just need a cop over here as soon as possible. Dispatch asks him, are, are they trying to get in? Kevin quickly replies, yes. They ask, are they trying to open the door? Once again, he responds, yes. 
The dispatcher asks Kevin, do you know who it is? And he says, no. Now, having an intruder is already a bad situation, but in a huge stroke of terrible luck, Kevin's wife came home early that night. So now there are two lives in jeopardy. He also tells the dispatcher a chilling piece of information. He said he also saw a gun, according to Colorado Springs police spokeswoman Barbara Miller. That made this a high priority call. The 911 dispatcher gets to work and five Colorado Springs police officers from the Stetson Hills Division respond. They rush to the home, a fourplex on picturesque circle, trying to catch the burglary, attack, whatever this intruder is trying to pull off while it's still in progress, likely approaching with no sirens so they don't scare the intruder off. Upon arriving, they quickly and somewhat easily nab the culprit but there's a big problem. The culprit is a 20 year old college student. She hasn't broken into the house. There is no gun. As a matter of fact, she's not committing any crime at all. She'd been traveling for more than an hour all the way from Denver in snowy weather just to see Kevin. When she's questioned, police learn Kevin Mm -hmm. actually invited her over that night after they met, say it with me, Danielle, on On craigslist Craigslist. (laughs) it seems like a disaster (laughs) yeah that's that's where the story takes a turn right uh and i don't think they met in the strictly platonic section they had been chatting (laughs) they'd been chatting online over the past few weeks she even arranged for a friend to specifically drive her out there that night according to officer miller She said she called Gaylor that night to say, hey, it's snowing hard, but he still wanted her to come. But um, bum that almost sounds like a joke, doesn't it? But Mm -hmm. that's the actual Mm -hmm. quote. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) When she showed up at his door, she didn't get the open arms she was expecting. He tried to get her to leave without calling too much attention to the fact there was a strange woman at the door at 3 a.m. Coincidentally, on the very same night that his wife came home early. Ooh, busted. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. What are you going to do in that situation, Danielle? If if you're Kevin, you're going to call 911 and say there's an intruder. (laughs) There's a crazy person here. They say they know me, but they don't. Don't believe them. (laughs) That's right. Uh, As a matter of fact, according to Officer Miller, the wife had arrived home just a few minutes before the college student showed up. It seems that Kevin panicked possibly having trouble explaining who was at the front door and called 911, making up the story about there being an intruder. He might have heightened the danger to make sure his wife didn't just go to the front door to ask, who the hell are you? Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm sure he did. That makes sense in my opinion. I think that's where this whole weapon thing kind of came into the story. She's Uh, got a gun, this poor little 20-year-old girl that's like, what? (laughs) Right, yeah, don't go to the front door, baby, she's got a gun. Uh, After police apprehended the dangerous suspect, they knocked on the door to talk to Kevin. Officer Miller states that he answered, speaking, quote, very, very softly, like he didn't want anyone to know. (laughs) And he kept telling police to, quote, just get rid of her. (laughs) Police asked him, are you okay, Danielle? (laughs) Okay, just please, can you just... Hey, I know. Can you just get rid of her? Thanks. Yeah, please, Bye. Please get, just, just get rid of her. <laughs> Please asked him if anyone else was at home, and he replied, mm-hmm. my wife is here, but I didn't want her to know anything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yep. But that determined student wasn't going anywhere. Before she left Denver, she was talking to Kevin on the phone for four hours. She was obviously very excited to spend some time with him in person until she found out he was married. She told police that she had no idea that was the case. With so many resources being wasted, police weren't going to leave without someone getting charged. And that's exactly what happened to Kevin. In Colorado, it's a crime to willingly false report to authorities. Uh, including pulling fire alarms as a prank or making a false report of a crime to the police, like Kevin did to try to cover up his cheating ways. False reporting is normally a class three misdemeanor, which is punishable by up to six months of jail time and fines between 50 and $750. 
The only reasonable defense to charges of this nature are if the person didn't realize what they were reporting was actually false, or if the event that was thought to be false did actually occur. So essentially, there's no way to defend it if you're lying about a situation like this. Uh, quote, charges had to be filed because we can't have other people thinking that you can just make a false report and nothing happens to you, said Officer Miller. I mean, did he genuinely think, like, what did he think was going to happen? I know he was kind of thinking on his feet here, like, let's call 911. But did he really think he could just open the door to officers and say, hey, can you just get rid of her, please? Uh, seriously. And then everything would be fine. I have one question that I wrote under this whole blurb <laughs> that I wanted to ask you, Danielle. And it was, how was this supposed to play out? Yeah, like... like <laughs> Where does this go? You, you call police, you call 911, and I'm even wondering about the condition. I would love to be a fly on the wall in, oh, when this is all going down. Like, how did the 911 call initiate? You know, was his wife like, who's at the door? No, don't go there. Someone's trying to get in. Well, are you going to call 911? <laughs> That's, um, oh, that is probably exactly. I bet you that's what happened. She's like, oh my God. It goodness. had to. And he's like, Dang, now what do I say? Right, right. She's he's got this, a gun. <laughs> yeah, he's on that chain of lying. Like once you start, you just have to make another link and make another link. And all of a sudden, the whole thing falls apart. Um, yeah, but how does it play out? It, obviously, he <laughs> couldn't have thought it out well. He no. was just acting on impulse, maybe being pushed into certain steps of it, you know, with his wife's logic of, well, if there's an intruder, then, you know, do something about it. Um, yeah, I don't know how this was supposed to play out, but I think <laughs> it's either. hilarious. But whispering to the police to exactly. just get rid of her is, yeah, just, just make I her mean, go away. I know. <laughs> 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 oh, could you imagine? I wonder if the wife was in the other room too, like, why is he whispering to these police officers? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh and, my goodness. You know, they sent five. They dispatched a, a pretty good team of officers to the scene. So a lot of witnesses for Kevin's embarrassment yeah, as well. <laughs> Um, so they did haul him in. Uh, he was quickly released. And several hours after the incident, he even called the police station to apologize for making the false report. Okay, and, that's good. Yeah. And apparently it actually might have helped. Uh, the false reporting charge would eventually be dismissed. There is some mention. I actually looked up his record. There's some mention of him completing something. So I don't know if that was service or a program of some kind. Yeah. But they they totally dismissed the charge. However, Kevin became a viral internet sensation with numerous sites reporting his story using titles such as Craigslist Rendezvous Cut Short by False Break-In Report. Man oh calls cops on Craigslist hookup after wife arrives. <laughs> so far, that was my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Cheating husband reported date as burglar to avoid being caught by wife. <laughs> that one's a good one, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the police even released his 911 tapes publicly. However, I tried so hard. I couldn't locate yeah. a copy. I could find references to it. Yeah. But they were old. The links didn't work anymore. I tried. You have no idea. I tried oh so gosh. hard to get a copy. Um, not only did they release the 911 tapes. They taped his apology when he called it in later, and they released that as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, you literally can never get police to release literally anything, and they're right. like, this is hilarious. Let's just release this. Yeah, yeah. He I can't made believe. such a big mistake on I, so many levels. That's just... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird because there's so many stories about this guy, yeah. and... For that material to have been out there, I'm so surprised other people didn't grab onto it and like, you know, make a YouTube video yeah. or something, but it just, it's not out there anymore. I really wish it was. Um, however, despite all of this, uh, Kevin just can't seem to stay clear of the court system. Oh, no. He's got numerous charges over the years. In 2017, he was charged with driving too slowly. Uh, it John, notes, this is your future. <laughs> <laughs> Driving too slowly. <laughs> yeah, it might be. It might be. Have you been talking to my wife? Because she complains about that all the time. Uh, on that charge, it notes that his blood alcohol content was zero, 0. 0.000. Okay. Uh, a few months later, he was charged with speeding. Once again, blood alcohol, blood alcohol content of zero. So he just does what he wants, essentially. Um, it just seems like it. Yeah, yeah. He he had a couple speeding charges, but I love that he had a driving too slowly charge. And there was just like <laughs> no reason. It's just like, what? what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, <sighs> it also seems that his lady troubles continued as well. In January of 2014, a female student at a local high school started receiving text messages from an unknown adult. An adult that was looking to do inappropriate things with the underage girl. She told school staff about what was happening. Props to her real quick. Okay, Definitely. Keep going. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I love yeah. I love that she did that, but it gets even better oh, because my gosh. the school staff, of course, contacted the police. And what did the police do? They responded to him using the girl's phone as if they were her. And they arranged a meetup at a nearby convenience store. Well, guess who shows up? <laughs> You're kidding me. Nope. Kevin Gaylor was cuffed and booked on suspicion of contributing to the delinquency of a minor, attempted sexual exploitation of a child, attempted sexual assault, and obscenity. Holy crap, John. Because, okay. I am so embarrassed for him just from that first story that I, like, slightly feel guilty it happened that way. Like, yeah. slightly feel guilty that he it became viral. But that wasn't enough to stop him from preying on these young girls. And he seriously. went even further and it was a girl in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Guy's got a problem. He's got a problem. Uh, now, I believe because of these charges, he's actually on like sexual offender lists and stuff. Yeah. It's, good. It's not good. And some of the charges I saw uh, even made it sound like there might have been some soliciting of an underage person that was involved in this, too. So I don't know if he was like offering her money to do certain things or something. How it, on earth did he get that girl's phone number? I don't know. And it was a huge stack of charges. Um, you know, I actually I paid to look at, at his records and try to understand all this stuff more. Um, wow. Yeah, it's it's <clears throat> it's a big knot of nasty, nasty charges. And I think I don't even think it's done yet. I think the court process is still going on some of this stuff. Um, yeah, it's it, it turned very, very serious. I can't find any information on if yeah. he's still married. And as a matter of fact, some of the articles about the original thing yeah uh, we're saying it was his girlfriend others were saying it was his wife but the quotes from the police spokeswoman kept saying wife so okay. i felt pretty good about the fact that it was his wife but you never yeah. know it could be you know common law marriage it could, it could just be a girlfriend that was living with him um but can't find any info on if he's still married but a big warning to our listeners in colorado if you see any ads on craigslist written by a guy named kevin just think twice please yep Yep. Big oh thank you gosh. to ABC News, KOAA, KKTV, KRDO, Westward.com, SHouseLaw.com, and The Gazette for information contributing to today's story. Also, just wanted to tack on a big thank you to Wikipedia for some of the information that we shared about the origins of Craigslist er earlier. That's absolutely insane. Like, I didn't expect it to spiral that seriously at the end oh my goodness he clearly does he has he has an issue and the second time he didn't have a door to hide behind he couldn't just say can you guys yeah. just can you just go away <laughs> he yeah. couldn't do yeah, that please, that time please go away i know uh, <laughs> could no, you imagine he was, it's so weird because at the time of the first charge he's like 24 if i remember right and okay. you know we know it's a 20 year old college student so it's really yeah. not that out yeah, there yeah that's not that out there but then the second charge happens 3 years later you're now talking about him being 27 and we're talking about a teenager in high school so likely you know around the age of 16 or so so it's like you know it's kind of getting worse almost um that's with that second good, charge yeah that's never a good pattern no <laughs> for no. things to spiral worse no. Oh my goodness. But I'm glad you called out and it, it, it is a really good thing, um, you know, for parents out there, um, be sure to let your kids know that, yeah, they need to talk to someone if they start getting some messages like that from I someone, like, even like if it's of, from someone they know. Yeah, exactly. I just feel like so many people tend to sway more towards the side of feeling like they're kind of uncomfortable and embarrassed and they don't want to have to admit someone's talking to them like that. Do you right. know what I mean? So seeing... A young woman, a, you know, a girl go up to her school and actually report that. That's huge because had she not, yeah. there's no telling what he might have done next, you know. And, you know, he already found her phone number somehow. There's no telling if he could have found out any more information. So right. that's really awesome. It is. It's so important if anything like that happens to you to report it to somebody. Yep. Yep. And I love how the police <laughs> handled it. I love 
that they essentially set, uh, you know, baited the trap and yep. had him show up and then knew who the guy was and knew they mm -hmm. had their man. Um, it's, it's also kind of interesting because all the articles about the initial occurrence um, said that people were reaching out to him constantly trying to get comments and no one could find a phone number on the guy. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. I ran into it time and time again with the original story that we tried to reach him for comment, but he's got no phone number. We can't find a phone number for him he over and over. He uses burner phones. It makes me even more scared about how often he's doing this. That's just not been discovered. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Or starting to, or using uh, different names or aliases. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Mm. Well, <clears throat> Uh, it's time to get into some other stories that we noticed while we were looking through all this. And uh, just to start with kind of a little bit of a warning story. This is just the type of way that a situation can go bad. Um, I've, I've, I mean, there are tons of bad stories out there, but this is just kind of the simple nuts and bolts of what can go wrong. Uh, from CBS News, in February of 2011, a man who sought to buy a cell phone on Craigslist was robbed at gunpoint when he met with the seller. The victim was connected with the robber through Craigslist after answering an online classified ad to get an iPhone for $500. When the victim met up with the seller, he pulled out a pistol, took his cash, and fled the scene. So that's the type of thing that you're trying to avoid. That's why we shared all those notes with you earlier about uh, safe trade spots and just being really careful about where you meet up with people. I heard another terrible story about a couple that wanted a PS4 and they met up with a guy who was selling a PS4. They tried to steal it from him. He fought back. The girl that was part of the couple pulled a gun and shot the guy. Uh, a lot of bad stories out there. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy too. And especially to a lot of our younger listeners, I know not just them, but I know when I was younger, I still would go on Craigslist a lot because I wanted an easy job. You know, we're all like these, yeah. we're young, we think we want to do something that makes us a lot of money in a really like very easy way. And there were so many times where I was so tempted to answer ads and looking back on it, I'm like, I probably would have ended up killed or something would have happened to me. Yeah. A lot of the times these deals, again, they can seem so great and we're so tempted. If it seems like so cheap and you know, easily accessible, money can get the best of us. You know, we want the, the we want a good The mechanics of it exactly. are so tough because <laughs> you've got a conversation going on about a value. So like you're literally setting up, if, if you're looking to rob someone, you're literally telling them how much to bring for you to rob. Yep. Exactly. You know? So yeah, it's, it's crazy. Just gotta be very, very careful. But I found a story that was absolutely hilarious. Like, I can't believe this is actually a thing. So to uh -oh. lighten things up a little bit, mm -hmm. authorities say that a Grand Rapids man has been arrested for selling catfish on Craigslist to undercover wildlife officers. <laughs> what? <laughs> Cat <laughs> catfish, I know. You can't <laughs> sell catfish on Craigslist? You can sell all this well, other crazy stuff and you can't sell catfish? Apparently, he was accused of selling 14 catfish taken from the Kalamazoo River. Uh, okay. Via Craigslist. And the State Department of Natural Resources says that they got a tip about an ad and undercover officers, they went and made contact with the man, purchased these catfish from him on a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> and he was arrested shortly afterwards. They said that the sale of the fish is a misdemeanor charge, punishable up to 90 days. Basically, they were saying the reason you can't do that is because they need to help protect commercial fishermen and state resources. So if you're just you know, we already know when you're hunting or fishing, there's usually a limit. There's sure. a size. And he was just willy nilly taking all these catfish and selling, selling them to people. So, I mean, I get it. But I thought that was the most absurd thing. This is these are the kind of things that I stumble upon in the free section. Like, who wants some catfish? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's man. Well, I've found a very clever use of Craigslist. You know, the whole robbery thing can kind of go both ways, as we learn in this next story. This is another one from CBS News, and it's another one that takes place in Colorado. I'm starting to become a big fan of Colorado, apparently, this episode. <laughs> um, Catherine Lucas had locked up her Trek road bike outside the Lazy Dog on Boulder's Pearl Street Mall, then went inside to watch a game. When she came out, her bike was gone. She got on Craigslist to see if anyone was selling bikes similar to the one that she had stolen, 
and she found a posting by 18-year-old Denzel Crawford. The posting even included a picture, and Catherine was positive it was her bike. So did she call police and have them go retrieve it? Not exactly. She went over to Denzel's house, acting like she was a buyer. She told Denzel that she wanted a test ride, and he agreed, and she hopped on the bike and pedaled off. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine, you know, she's probably pedaling so hard to get away from it. <laughs> Seriously. I just love how simple it is. I just want a test ride. He's like, hey, this, this seems like okay. a pretty cool bike. Yeah. Can I check just it out? I just want to try it out. I'll just, I'm just going around the block. I'll be right back. <laughs> Literally just hops on and takes off speed lightning yeah. just flying down the road. Yeah. How long oh, do you think he gosh. stood out there, like just watching down the road? Like, oh, probably so long. Because if someone, I mean, first of all, I'm sure he did watch for a minute. He's like, wait a minute. I don't think she's coming back. And yeah, then at that point, not. you're really going to think about it and be like, is someone really going to steal this bike? Yeah, they would because I did it. Another and then I'm, thing, I'm sure he was just so wrapped up in his own brain. He didn't even understand what was happening. Another time I would love to be a fly on the wall. I just want to see his face as he's watching her right off and then see when the tickle in his brain happens about, hold on a second. Wait, is she not coming back? I would have maybe made it like 10 feet and then let out the most horrific cackle laugh. Right, while like right, right. riding away as Sucker. fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my once, goodness. Once she had the bike mm. safely back at home, she did then call the cops. They went over, they talked to Denzel. He did wind up confessing to stealing the bike. So I hope Denzel learned his lesson and hopefully won't try that again. But uh Catherine Lucas, I, I really love what she did there. Smart, know, smart to woman. Her. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have another story out of Portland, Oregon, straying away from Colorado. Mm. When I don't even know how to pronounce their last name, so I'm not even going to attempt to to butcher it. Okay. But a new couple, they were planning their wedding in 2007, and all they wanted, because they were, I think, renovating just their kitchen, was Home Depot gift cards instead of gifts. Right. But at the end of their ceremony, they only had three cards. And I believe there were 100 something plus guests and they knew something was wrong because there's no way. What a crappy family. Exactly. (laughs) They're like, you know, there's no way. Like our family, questionable sometimes, but they would still bring us Mm -hmm. our Home Depot gift cards. But they ended up accusing the reverend that they had hired through a Craigslist ad of stealing the cards. What? She denied stealing all of the gifts. But police ended up investigating and they found every single one and charged her with second degree theft. This is why you don't hire your reverends on Craigslist. Yeah, I ran into that story as well. I was thinking about it, about doing it for the main story. Um, I believe they even had footage Mm -hmm. of her at Home Depot using the cards and buying a bunch of stuff. (laughs) I'm telling you. (sighs) Yeah. What gets to me too, off of this story, but back to the previous one. When someone has something stolen, at least nowadays, one of the first places you check are like pawn shops and Craigslist, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like almost always. So why would you immediately go and post something you just stole on Craigslist? Yeah, you might want to store it and sit on it for a while. (laughs) Exactly. And then why would you take the Home Depot gift cards you just stole from someone who's probably looking for all these gift cards straight to Home Depot to buy stuff? Seriously. Yeah, yeah. That's true. She could have at least recycled, like, you know, tried to launder the gift cards, sold them to other people for like a lesser Uh value or something along those lines. Like, I wonder what she got. Like, cause um, she, she didn't go into that probably knowing they wanted Home Depot gift cards. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember there was some detail in terms of what she was buying. But if I remember right, it was just like, you know, like patio furniture or, oh, or my goodness. stuff for around her home. Yeah. It's like, oh, how convenient. I need to spruce my house up a bit. A bit. <laughs> right, right. Oh, my gosh. Well, you guys, let me know what you think. Now is the time to vote. Who do you think's going to win this month? Who had the best crazy craigslist crime story i think we both brought really good ones i do too i feel great about this episode i think we're both pretty evenly matched i'm curious to see how this is going to go i know because now we're one to one too so yeah yeah it's important to vote folks it sure is on 
Twitter. I forgot it. I was going to say Instagram on Twitter <laughs> and on YouTube. Yeah. I love it when you guys vote on Twitter, though, because I wait for a while to cast my vote and then I can see how much is, going, <laughs> is tallying up so far. So I like the conversation <laughs> that goes on around all that. People talking yeah. about, uh-huh. oh, my God, can you believe it's going this way? Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's really fun. Be sure to follow at Crime After Pod on Twitter uh, for the next episode coming out December 1st. Well, it's that time of year, Danielle. So we're going to pull out another themed episode. We Hope sure you guys are. are ready for Santa Claus crimes. It's coming. It is. I'm telling you. I are was you excited? telling John earlier. That's not a phrase I would ever typically think you would hear. But I was shocked. We did some preliminary research. The yeah. amount of Santa Claus criminals and crimes that involve Santa Claus, it's a little bit crazy. Yeah, we're going to have a lot to pull from, and I'm pretty sure we're going to have a healthy other stories section outside of our main stories, too. A lot of Santa Claus crimes out there. Oh, yeah. You know what? I don't know if I trust him coming through my chimney anymore. <laughs> yeah, especially if he's coming in with an empty sack. That might that might tip you off. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, if you guys like this and you want to see more of John and I, you can find us on different forms of social media. I have my own YouTube channel. Just type up Dan. Danielle Hallen, and it's the same across all my social media sites, which are only Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me if you search for Lord and Arts on YouTube or on Twitter as well. If you have ideas for crime after crime, maybe topics, or if you just want to send us an email, you can do that at crime after crime at lordandarts.com or visit us on Twitter at Crime After Pod. Have fun with the Crime After Crime crew and all the fun chat we do there. Mm-hmm. Crime After Crime is produced and hosted by Danielle Hallen and John Lorden. And as always, we want to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to our patrons. Our patrons get a bonus Patreon special segment monthly, which I know I beat this topic like a dead horse, but you guys, it is so awesome over there. We talk about the coolest topics. You get to know us. It's a fun time. Plus, patrons also get a personal shout out and an upcoming Patreon special. That's right. And uh, Daniel, I don't even know if I told you, but we've added new levels over at the Crime After Crime uh, Patreon. So now you can come in. Before, we just had it where you could be a crimester, um, but we've added two additional levels. So you can still be a crimester for only $1 or more per month. However, if you want some free swag, you can step it up to... An evil Elmo (laughs) for $5 a month and you're uh, you're bad news and we love you for it. You'll get the same stuff as Crimesters plus a crime after crime refrigerator magnet. So you'll get the usual monthly specials. Also refrigerator, if I could say it, (laughs) refrigerator magnet. Refrigerator. And we have a $10 level for what we're calling the DJ Tubers. Mm-mm. Super fans Mm-mm. of Danielle Mm-mm. and John. You'll get all that same stuff plus the magnet, and you'll also get a photo from Danielle and myself signed. So be sure to check out the Patreon. If you enjoyed the show, please rate or review us on whatever platform you found us on. And the best way you can help us out is to tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone how much you love crime after crime. And do not forget, we also have a merch store that you can check out. If you want to share the winning mug with me, head on over to teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash crime after crime. And that's it, you guys. We will see you next time on Crime After Crime. Take care. Take care.